It is 10 p.m. here in Accra, and uh, we are happy to join you in your various homes with The Stands. It comes your way every Wednesday here on TV3, right alongside News at 10, which also brings you highlights of the major stories making rounds in the country and around the world. This is coming to you from the news sub here in Accra. I am Martin Estiedu Dati. Tonight, I will be joined by Kamala Kuche, senior broadcast journalist here at Media General, and then also Alfredo Conte, who is head of the business desk at uh, Media General. Before we delve into matters that we will be discussing tonight, here are the highlights of today's stories. The Eminent Persons Advisory Committee of the Electoral Commission has requested the electoral management body to engage IPAC and other stakeholders over the region controversy over the compilation of a new voters register. The committee made its position clear after a crunch meeting in Accra. Uh, the National Road Safety Authority has described as woefully inadequate the 6.5 million Ghana cities granted for safety, road safety sensitization as part of an action plan to curb road crashes. Public Relations Officer of the Authority, Kwame Kodia, said the mandate of the authority requires a lot more resource to be executed successfully. And away from that, an economist and uh, management consultant, Dr. Ishmael Yamsin, wants the 1992 constitution amended to promote consistency in economic policy. Addressing the, this New Year's school, he cited portions of the constitution which impede the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. Uh, the Vice Chancellor of the Sunyai Technical University, Professor Kwejo Edinkra Apia, has urged the Ghanaians to respect technical education and patronize products made by its students. He told TV3 after delivering a speech at the 71st Annual New Year School and Conference here in Accra. And Siemens, a German global powerhouse in electricity and digitization, has signed a 250 million infrastructure deal with the Ghana Grid Company under the G20 Compact with Africa. Their initiative will see Siemens collaborate with Gridco to um, upgrade and extend Ghana's power transmission infrastructure. So those are the major he headlines here in the country. Let's find out what's happening elsewhere around the world. And we are starting from the United States of America and China. They have their own beef going on. Interestingly, though, they have seemed to sign the first phase of a deal. The U.S. and China have signed an agreement aimed at an easing trade war that has rattled markets and weighed on the global economy. U.S. President Donald Trump said the pact would be transformative for the U.S. economy. Chinese leaders called it a win-win deal that would help foster better relations between both countries. Uh, the US, still in the United States, though, the U.S. House of Representatives has passed a resolution to submit articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump to the Senate for a trial. The resolution passed largely along party lines by 228 votes as against 193. The Senate will decide whether to convict and remove Donald Trump from office. And um, elsewhere around the world, Russian President Vladimir Putin has proposed constitutional changes that would give him scope to extend his grip on power after leaving the presidency. If approved by the public, the proposals would transfer power from the presidency to parliament. Putin is due to step down in 2024 when his fourth term of office comes to an end. And um, uh, the 10 years to the end of 2019 has been confirmed as the warmest decade on record by three global agencies. According to NASA, NOAA and the UK Met Office, last year was the second warmest in a record dating as far back as 1850. And I can attest to that. I'm sure all of you uh, listening or watching now could also attest to the fact that last year was pretty pretty warm okay so we're going straight into it where 34 people unfortunately woke up to some news about the death of some 34 people in a motor accident at Dompoasi near Komenda in the central region 54 others suffered various degrees of injuries the accident reportedly occurred around midnight when two buses collided head-on within Cape Coast and the Takrade Highway when can we deal decisively with the carnage on our roads? We've put together a series of stories we'll be playing for you 
then we'll delve into our discussion later tonight when my colleagues join me to uh, delve into it. Uh, also, the National Road Safety Authority has described as woefully inadequate the 6.5 million cities granted for road safety sensitization as part of an action plan to curb road crashes. Public Relations Officer of the Authority, Kwame Kudia, said that, that the mandate of the authority requires a lot more resources for them to be able to execute their mandate. An action plan to tackle road carnage in the country was approved in March 2018 by President Akufuado. The plan provided, among other things, an additional 6.5 million cities for public sensitization and education. Though the money was released to the authority and used for its purpose, Public Relations Officer of the Authority, Kwame Kodia, says the authority requires more funds. I mean, it was supposed to be in 2018. Yes. Yes, so in 2018, throughout last year, we received the amount in full. Okay. Yeah, so there are no outstanding uh, payments due on that, as far as I'm concerned. In as much as the gesture is appreciated, it, we, we intend to do um, three advertisements for three TV stations, not less than, not even up to 10 radio stations. That amount of money won't even take us for a quarter. As part of the sensitization campaign, he said the authority is also training some 13,000 selected high-risk drivers across the country. The money has been received and it's been expended for the purpose for which it was given. Part of it is the over 13,000 um, drivers that we have identified across the country um, on, on routes that we consider to be very challenging and uh, try to refresh them through some trading together with the police and DVLA. Kwame Kodia said the authority has had to collaborate with institutions like the Ghana Journalists Association and the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association, GIBA, to pull off its sensitization drive because it does not have the staff strength. He called on the general public to take road safety a collective responsibility. Uh, staying on this uh, subject matter, despite several road safety campaigns, there appears to be no end in sight in curbing the accidents. In the following report, Porsche Gabo uh, looks at the impact of road crashes and what could be the way out in curbing the menace. This vehicle at the cantonment MTTD was once on the road taking people to their homes, offices, as well as to their loved ones. This young man, it does not matter how old he lives, he may have died in accident, but his soul and spirit is with the Lord. Grief-stricken relatives who cannot be consoled, such scenes tell the impact of the devastation of road crashes. Over 13,000 road crashes were recorded last year, resulting in 2,284 deaths. These are not mere figures, but breadwinners, family members, and loved ones. The Drompoasi accident on the Cape Coast Takradi Highway on Tuesday, January 14, has claimed 35 lives, an accident blamed on human error. The crash was as a result of one of the drivers uh, unlawfully changing lane to face oncoming uh, vehicle and in the process, though on a straight and flat road, because he could not overtake a vehicle ahead of him before getting to the curb, crash. Uh, head on with the oncoming vehicle that has right of way. The accident and emergency department of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital on the average receives between 20 and 30 cases of road accident cases daily. The degree of injuries are too bad. In some cases they are unconscious. My, all these have broken limbs. In some cases we will end up amputating the limbs and the impact is huge and it is unacceptable. The impact on the lives of victims are telling. Broken limbs, fractures, as well as the psychological trauma will be etched in the memory of victims. I have a very broken leg, then the shoulder. I went to theater twice now. 
I don't know whether I will go to theater again or not because the shoulder is very, very painful now. They say I can't withstand the other side unless the leg gets well. Before I realized I was under the car for now, I'll be going for plastic surgery maybe next two weeks or next month. I sought answers on the way out to cabin the menace on our roads. The police should check the drivers a lot because I don't know whether they are interested in taking the five series and two series from the truck drivers and leaving the private cars who get drunk and then they will just leave them. The motor riders, I will, not, I will say maybe they should take their time over speeding, rough riding and other things. Yeah. And the drivers too, they have to be careful. The drivers who are driving in the night on long journeys should ensure that if they are tired, they don't need to continue the journey. And they need to take enough rest. And so over speeding, drunk driving, are a number of them that leads to accident. Traffic enforcers, especially the police, you know, ought to bring the users of commercial motorbikes we call Okada, you know, to obey traffic regulations. Superintendent Alexander being S of the view, dualizing single carriageways will make the highways safer. The Trans-West African Highway from Accra to Paga through Kumasi has to be dualized, as we have done. We have done in piecemeal in town, but on the highway section we haven't. The intercity section we haven't. And then a Lubo to a flower, the N1, we also have to look at it and dualize it. When it, those sections are dualized, there is minimal possibility of a vehicle hitting head on with another vehicle. A strategic location, we should have uh, what do you call rest stops. The state must look into it and invest heavily into it deliberately. And also ensure that we invest heavily in towing and service recovery trucks. A stringent uh, measures will be put in place at the vehicle test center by DVLA so that vehicles that are, don't, are put in unprescribed, undesirable headlamps are removed before they are given a uh, roadworthy certificate. The National Road Safety Commission, as part of new moves to prevent road accidents in 2019, proposed to have commercial vehicles fitted with speed limiters, but this has not seen the light of day. As it stands, it will take more than education to ensure compliance to road safety measures, procedures and policies in Ghana. Poshigabo, TV3 News, Accra. There's still news at 10, stroke the stands. And we, as we mentioned, it comes away every Wednesday. So uh, we're staying on the subject matter. The challenge, however, is that in 2018, the country recorded several other road crashes. And the president set um, a, a, a committee uh, that needed to look into what was really the cause of these accidents and how as a nation we could deal with it decisively. So the committee made some three strong uh, recommendations and that's what we'll be looking at um, shortly. Uh, it was in April 2016, I beg your pardon, 16th April 2018, that the committee made these recommendations. And uh, in their report, they said that there needed to be more education, there needed to be enforcement of already existing laws, and then also we needed to do a bit more when it came to engineering and infrastructure. First on education, the, they said resource the National Road Safety Commission to scale up public education and sensitization uh, on road safety with an additional 6.5 million Ghana City from the road fund. Now, a moment ago, we brought you the story uh, where the road, uh, National Road Safety Commission uh, authority now said that they are unable to uh, completely go undertake the uh, you know their mandate because they were less resourced or they needed more money to do that. So that is one of the concerns they raised. It seemed to tie in line with what the committee recommended on enforcement. They said that uh, they needed to enforce road traffic laws by the police through spot fines by automation of MTTD operations. Also, they needed to partner with private towing companies and nationwide traffic management and enforcement limited to vigorously enforce regulations. Then, the third uh, most important thing they mentioned in their recommendation was the engineering, uh, adding that resource the Ghana Highway Authority, the Department of Feeder Roads, with at least 335 million Ghana cities a year to provide signage and road markings 
for roads over a three-year period. So clearly they were even able to mention specific amounts because uh, after extensive consultation, they made these recommendations and were certain that if these monies were made available and the, 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 the needed resources were also made available, the country would at least reduce the road carnages that we've been recording in the last few days. My colleagues have joined me in studio. Let's delve straight into the matters for tonight, the vexed matters for tonight. Alfred Okansi, head of the business desk here at TV3, a media general, I beg your pardon. Alfred, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Great. Good evening to you. Martin. And then also we have Komla Kluche, senior broadcast journalist and uh, also a parliamentary correspondent. Komla, thank you for making time to good join to us. Good to see you. Martin. Yes. Uh, Happy New Year to you. I mean, this is the first time that I think that uh, we are coming together as a stance. Yeah. For our viewers to get to hear a, a, a bit on a number of the national issues. We're starting from the roads, which is of prime importance to us. Unfortunately, we woke up to the news of what happened uh, on the Dumpuasi stretch. How did the news hit you? Let me start with you, Alfred. How did this come to you? Well, first off, uh, I, I obviously a very sad um, development because ending the year 2019, there was that indication that we weren't doing too well when it comes to uh, the uh, reducing the carnage on our roads. Um, if you compare the figure of the end of, 20, in fact, from January to August of 2019, there was actually an increase in the number of casualties on the roads as compared to the previous year, January to August 2018. Mm. So there was a clear indication that something was wrong somewhere, we weren't doing something right. And I have always argued that, you know, it's, it's, we have normalized the abnormalities of getting used to the fact that at the end of every year, we should have a little over 1,005 mm. people dying on our roads. If mm. you check the statistics um, from 1990 or 1991 till now, there hasn't been any year that less than 1,500 people have died on the roads. That clearly tells you that we started normalizing this abnormal situation of over 1,500 people dying as a result of road accidents, and we always say that, look, mm. it's human error, mm. blah, blah, blah. But there are other countries that, that, are, that are doing something right, mm. you know, which, which we could look at, you know, because people would always get away with wrongdoing if you don't punish them. So if it's is human it, error... Is it an issue of... You see, there is the, there is the uh, inability to even decide or focus what exactly the problem is to, so we can zero in and deal with it. Is it an issue of poor infrastructure or the bit about drivers being reckless? or the fact that we do not have the right agencies in place to even help. For instance, if uh, some of these vehicles break down on the roads, they sometimes are left there, most often even over 48 hours, mm -hmm. you know, endangering life, lives of other motorists. So where exactly do we lay the blame? For which reason we, are, we seem to be consistently recording these unfortunate numbers? I'm gonna be, you know, there, there was a, a towing policy, which was back and forth. We don't know where the, 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 it's, reached. The, it's reached now. We eventually had to withdraw it, if I recall. Um, it was one of the companies of Jospon that was then awarded a particular contract. Um, we weren't too happy with you know, the, the figures involved, so it became a media battle back and forth, and then it was withdrawn. But the essence of that policy should not be lost, because mm. clearly, if accidents happen as a result of vehicles being broken down and actually left on the roads, obstructing movement. It means that we should have a policy in place that will deal with that one as well. It appears that we've abandoned that and, and if there's some conversation ongoing, we're not aware of it. But we should revisit that particular policy, that towing policy where if the vehicle breaks down, mm. your vehicle is towed, at your yes, expense, yes, you know, yes. and, and that's by the state, mm. you see. So that's one thing I think that we, we can do. And the other bit also is that a number of the accidents we've seen happen on roads that are that are good. I mean, if you say for the lack of better expression, because, you know, we don't have many good roads. So those ones that are smooth, you would, you would observe that drivers would now want to speed and, and then, mm. they, then as a result, either overtaking wrongly they get into these accidents. Yeah. The other situation is with the lack of visibility 
you know, of either road signs that are not poor present markings, or poor markings as well. In fact, there are some areas that do not have all these road road markings. And so, you know what I mean? Look Makes at, it difficult. Uh, let, me, let me bring in Kamala here. I mean, you <coughs> have been driving, I'm sure, from the age of 15, which is an illegal, <laughs> an illegality in itself. <laughs> but, then, but then, I mean... Let me issue a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> God yeah. That's not you. quite true. <laughs> but then, yeah, what, what do you make of the... the unfortunate news that almost every year we seem to be recording in excess of, our, of over a thousand of our citizens losing their lives on the road. I'm going to take it from, I mean, the beginning of the year. This is the 15th day uh, of the year. That's 15th of January. I'll take it from uh, the fires from the beginning of the year, I think on the first or so, we had a fire outbreak. And Kumasi or the Shanti region seem to have recorded some high numbers, mm. we were told last week. Then I bring it down to the issue of the accident. Around this time, I think it is worth noting that uh, naturally, I, we, we do record accidents around the Hamatan periods. Mm. One, because of poor visibility right so even if you are driving i mean if you're a driver you need to be extra careful when you're driving around this time you pose the question of whether it was because of a, a lack of implementation of of uh, regulations or whether it was a human factor i think it's a combination of both mm -hmm. but to a very large extent for me i will put the blame on consumers of the road, either to the drivers and then the passengers. Okay. Martin. I mean, they're, they're all part... I, I, was, I was reading some news feeds a while ago before we came on air, and one of the surviving drivers in this Don uh, incident. Yeah. He was saying that he was actually trying to do an overtaking. You were doing an overtaking. What, what are the rules that govern overtaking? Mm. The DVLA law and then the road uh, uh, user law and all of that are quite clear on it. You, one, you need to maintain a certain distance. Two, you also need to know that the road ahead of you, there is no impediment or, uh, mm. beyond the driver you are trying to overtake. The, this driver considered that. Now, what was the speed limit at which he was trying to do this overtaking? Mm -hmm. That's something that needs to be looked into. For the number of lives, over 30 lives that have been lost. Now, in these individuals, in just a, speed of a, a split of a second. Now, what, what, what were the passengers saying? I want to feel the, the, the reaction in the car it, at the time uh, the... the the driver was doing this overtaking. This was late in the night. Mm -hmm. Most of the people who who go on these trips late in the night, a lot of them sleep in the car. Yes. So you were very unconscious. You don't even know what is happening on the road. Yeah. My that'll concern. That would be, be quite uh, an unfortunate feeling. That would be the worst part of it. Yes, absolutely. Realizing that you're dead. I, I, you can't even realize that you are dead. All you know is that you went to sleep and that's the end of it. Mm. For me, my concern is that if, as a matter of fact, this incident is investigated and uh, we get to the bottom of it and realize that the driver did a wrong overtaking, one, we need to look at the construction of that section of the road. I am getting reports that indicate that over six accidents have happened uh, at that particular session in the last... Uh, three or four years, mm. that same spot, what is the, uh, the issue about that particular spot? Assuming without admitting that these accidents have occurred there. Mm. Now, somebody needs to go and look at the construction of the road, whether there is some fault with it or not. That's number one. Number two, now, uh, uh, drivers or motorists adhering to road signs. That is one of the things. A lot of us drive and we do not adhere to it. But I think to a very large extent, it is something we need to look at critically. You are driving and you are supposed to drive at, when you are entering into a town or say a community, 
you are not supposed to go beyond 50 kilometers per hour. We have, over the period, offended this at every point in time. Right. We do not observe it. Um, we'll be going further into this to look at um, driver and passenger behavior as well, because it is also very important and it's a part of this entire thing. But uh, a second ago, an unfortunate news we just had indicated that 10 vehicles have just been involved in an accident right this moment. 13 vehicles. So those are the pictures uh, on your screens right now. Uh, it happened uh, in the wee hours of the evening, say just before the evening, around 4.30 and 5 p.m. Um, about 13 vehicles involved in that accident, including commercial, uh, commercial vehicles and motorbikes. Uh, although the cause of the crash is currently uh, unknown, reports indicate that the, the accident uh, caused some huge traffic on that stretch. It happened in, in and around the um, uh, Adenta, Adenta stretch, Adenta Highway. So uh, the police have been to the scene to try and uh, bring some sanity to the place. Clearly, very an unfortunate d development following the fact that we are also discussing uh, road carnage and how we can curb that. So we're coming back in studio to wrap up on this where uh, the concern of the role we all have to play, you and I and other road users, how can we contribute to helping reduce or totally take away issues of road accidents or carnage on our roads? Um, Alfred, in your mm. earlier submission, you mentioned that there are multiple faces to dealing with this, including every other road user, the driver, the trot trot mate, the, uh, and even the passengers. There are passengers who would encourage a driver to speed up there in a hurry. There are those who would also advise a driver, take it easy, we are just going home, or we are, we are not in a rush. Don't. At what point, or what exactly is the role we can all play in, in, in this? So you, you made a great point about road safety is a shared responsibility, and I'm sure that it's it's something that we've said over and over again, and everybody else acknowledges that. But you see, even if you're in a vehicle and your passengers are putting pressure on you, you are the driver. Mm -hmm. You you the the optimum responsibility is on you to get your passengers safely to their destination. I've seen some very def positively defiant drivers who would not listen to or give or pay heed to the pressure that um, you know passengers will give to them. And eventually it pays off to the good of these passengers because right. eventually if they overspeed, overtake dangerously and there's an accident, you're not going to blame the passengers. The driver that you're going to be talking about because he has that responsibility, mm. yes. But you see, as humans as we are, we would like to take advantage of weak systems. It's, it's very normal with human beings. So long as there's an advantage that you would want to you know, exploit, mm. humans will do that. And that's why there's, there are rules and regulations. We live in a country, as we say, is ruled by the law. It's the rule of law is where we have ourselves. We are not in a banana republic where anybody just wakes up and does anything. Mm. But the existence of the law in itself is not important. It is the implementation, effective implementation of the law, which is the most important thing. So there are adequate laws to check human behavior on the road. But the implementing agencies, you had National Safety Authority talking about lack of funding. When you go to MTTD, they will tell you something else. DVLA will tell but you something else. That is what I disagree with them. I mean, if they are talking about lack of funding, to do exactly what? The educational aspect of, of their mandate or what? For how long? See... Maybe it, should, is, should, it, is, it, is, it is beyond yeah. education. No, this is beyond education. That is why it is multifaceted. So, so maybe yeah. Alfred should learn and then you can... Uh, you see, we, in, in as much as we, you would have a position, but we cannot take away education from, primary. you know, the the approach mm. or the processes in dealing with this particular situation. Right. And that's why I made the point that ignorance of the law is not an excuse. So if you educate someone on the laws on the road mm. and the person breaks it, then you apply the law. Mm. But as it stands now, human beings are taking advantage of weak systems because no, 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 there's not adequate implementation of the law okay. on the road. Kamala, come in and, and, and if you can make it very brief. We are us. road users. I think that, and I mean, 
much of the responsibility. I, 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 like you've said, we have enough laws and implementation of it. Yes, it's been done. People have been fined. They've been arrested because they've jumped either uh, the red light. You did a wrong U turn. They've been sent to court. They have been fined. Some have been jailed and all that. Look, for me, I seriously disagree with the National Road Safety Commission if they say that they are not having a, 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 a much funding. funding to do specifically what? Yes, they have, they a, have mandate. a mandate. They have, they have yeah. clear mandates of what Are they, they need to do, which includes educating, which includes the, education, the, the, the driver population. But they should be telling us how much education has cost them because they've not had enough funding. They should be but telling us that, that. But that is what we are the, seeing when, that uh, as part of Martin, the many I, problems, the increasing Martin, number you of think, road accidents. You think that this gentleman, sorry, lack of education. You think that the driver who said he was doing an overtaking. Does he know he didn't have to do an overtaking there? You see, that's, so you that's, 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 that's how did he acquire his that's license? Who yeah. gave him the license? You see, Kamala, did he go to the system to write the exams and you knowing the road signs and everything? You know, right. to how did he acquire the license? In, in, you see, yeah. sometimes you would go through the process to get a license. Mm. As to how you behave, when you get the license, different. it's a yeah. very that different thing. Why That's why there are laws that's to it. check. We, have to, we, we, need, to, we need to go yes. through. It, it is to go about to behavioral change. Absolutely. It is the individuals who are causing this. Yes. Look, we do agree that there are some infractions on the road that would also cause this. However, to a very large extent, I think, and 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 this can be subject to any any uh, uh, different disagree uh, disagreement that. Much of these things is caused by human factors. True. And just picking up from where Komla landed, if you are in a vehicle anytime and you're driving, just take it that every other person is foolish. You are the only smart person. Good and don't drive <laughs> safely. Drive safely. And hopefully, while you're doing the right thing, other people will see that uh, and also learn from you. Be defensive when you're driving. Driving is take defensive. Take very good yeah. care of every other issue on the road and we are hoping that by the end of the year we'll be telling a different story where well, you and I will still be here to enjoy a new year. All right, let's uh, shift subjects now because uh, this, of course, and, and we've spent enough time on this because it's of concern to almost every one of us who uses the road. Let's turn our attention to that all important issue of whether or not the country needs a new voters register. Some opposition parties led by the National Democratic Congress are battling the Electoral Commission over its decision to compile a new voters register. You will recall that uh, on the 31st of December 2019, a deputy chairperson of the Electoral Commission in charge of Operation Samuel Tete told the media that the commission is procuring a new biometric voters management system at the cost of some six million US dollars. So we'll go and listen to him, then we'll come and look at all the shenanigans that have, uh, you know, uh, mushroomed as a result of the EC's decision to put together a new voters register. The amount of money spent refurbishing parts and renewing warranties could be used to acquire a brand new system that is robust, modern, and durable, user-friendly, with full functionality and warranties. Bought from the immediate past vendors of the solution indicated that the Commission would assume so much needless risk if steps were not taken to change the equipment. Because we are unable to have a way of removing dead or deceased names from the register, almost always we have a bloated register. In effect, using such a periodic replacement register for subsequent elections will greatly affect the credibility of the elections. All right, so there have been a series of protests against the, the EC's decision to compile a new voters register. And one of the parties that is leading this campaign against the compilation of a new voters register is the NDC. Its General Secretary, Johnson Esedun Ketia, spoke to us earlier on News 360. We are sending signal that this is the beginning. We will move from here 
to other regional capitals. In the end, we want to tell the Electoral Commission that since they have failed to use their reasoning powers, we are going to whip them to do what we want them to do. We have proven to her that the register as we have now, we are left with only one million people to register. You want to throw that one away and go begin registering about 17 million. And we have proven to her that it is far, far cheaper to register one million people than to register 17 million people. So that's Johnson Esedun Ketia at the Tamale rally over the weekend. He was in our studios uh, earlier this evening and spoke to Alfred Okansi where he also reiterated why they thought it was wrong for the EC to compile a new voters register when they could probably just update the current one. Let me start with you, Komla. Uh, I mean, this subject uh, doesn't seem to want to go away anytime it soon. Won't. Key voices uh, like the uh, eminent 24-member uh, eminent group have also spoken. What have they been saying? Well, uh, they met uh, the Electoral Commission this morning. The meeting lasted for well over two and a half hours. And they were quite brutal and frank with um, the EC. One, they, they sought to find out justification from the EC why they are bent on compiling a new role. And the EC made the point that, look, one, uh, with the current system that they have, uh, the data system is almost inspiring, and if they have to do an upgrade, that's going to cost them far, far, far more than getting a new one. Mm. So they brought in an IT uh, guy who did a demonstration and all that, but uh, the members of the eminent, em eminent uh, group, the 21 of them, were quite frank with them to say that, look, there are people involved in this game. You are the independent arbiter, so to speak. However, you still need to have dialogue with them. Mm. So this is what is going to happen. You need to go back to the people who will also be involved in this. So the EC, to a very large extent, has stated their side of the story. The other parties, which is the iPad, have also made their stance. These are two points that you do the register and then the other minority parties are saying no, this won't happen to you. It's a yes and then a no issue. However, the eminent uh, 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 men are saying that, look, let's all come together. We, the eminent persons, the IPAC and then the EC, will sit down, do further consultations for us to be able to come out with a solution that would be beneficial to all of all them. Parties. Did they that agree on what, a date? Well, we, we, of when this they, meeting they, come off? they need to officially communicate that okay. to the party. So they actually did not give them a time. Level. Mind you, the EC, uh, the EC has a lot of work to do. So they are racing with time as a matter of fact True. to be able to do this. And that was one of the things that they asked that, will you be able to do this looking at the time frame? Well, from our sources of the meeting, the justification was that uh, they have made the provision to fly people out to go and learn about the things and even bring all of that before coming all of in. These, these are what our sources are telling us. But they maintain that, look, what we intend to do legally, it falls within our remit. However, the eminent men are saying that engage further. Broader that consultation. That is what they do, okay. engage you, you, you spoke to a Sayyidin yeah. yeah. I mean, <coughs> you were you convinced by his argument that we really needed to either upgrade or totally re review the decision by the EC that we needed a new register? Well, I, I would say I just try to understand a bit further what the position of the opposing parties have been on this. Because, you know, sometimes when there's a lot of um, talk, the, the salient issues are lost. So I, I tried to disapprehend exactly what he was talking about. And I, the, the point about um, the Electoral Commission's facts that they say was presented by the 
consultant and also some IT experts who yeah. recommended that they change the IT system and also uh, change uh, the BVRs and then add this uh, facial, the facial recognition, recognition function or to it in the process of ensuring that we have a clean process um, that these parties haven't seen, you know, these documents that the Electoral Commission is referring mm. to. If indeed that's the case, I mean, the Electoral Commission reserves the right to, to do what, what it has to mm. do, you know, but then I, Neutrality is relatively subjective. I mean, you, you can't get it all perfect. But to ensure that, I mean, these 21 eminent persons, their right wisdom, believe that um, we would have to get some level of understanding going into this very crucial election. Mm. And that's why they recommended this dialogue. And I think that, you know, in it's their the wisdom, to to work to, we may not get all of them agreeing, but at least it's, it should give us some amount of <laughs> clarity. But will the easy do it? I will mean, the easy do it? No, that's that's from the, their posture. No, at this the point, point. At this point, so it was today that the uh, the eminent group of persons advised mm -hmm. that it a broader is just, consultation be done. I believe their that, advice is not binding. No, oh, binding. of course, no, we, we do know <laughs> yeah. that. But I think that for the electoral commission to see to deem it fit to put together these members or wise council, I am sure that whatever advice they give they would strongly consider it. If even they would not, they probably would speak to it. But mm -hmm. I am looking forward that hopefully by the end of this week, we probably will start hearing some timelines as to when the Electoral Commission mm -hmm. would re-engage IPAC and then also have the eminent members as part of the meeting. Then we can make some proper headway. Mm -hmm. They need to listen because it doesn't seem to be playing out fair or clear for the Electoral Commission. Yeah. Gone were the days where the Electoral Commission would say this and it's, it made more sense as to why they wanted to undertake that journey. Unfortunately, this time around, there are more questions to be answered True. than the EC's single decision of wanting to put together a voter's role. We are the people, and the voice of the people, as they say, is the voice of God. Hopefully, the Electoral Commission But the EC makes the argument that there are 13 opposing parties uh, who do not want <laughs> yes, it. But I mean, how do not want it? But how, how, many, the how many of those political parties, the so-called 13 parties, how many of them have good standards? Add even <laughs> one percent to their national uh, uh, voter Actually population. Active. I mean, they, are not even, they don't even have regional offices. That's, that's, so that that's the thing, though. Is, yeah. I, I'll borrow your term. Their activities are totally bunk. They do not <laughs> add. They do not add anything to them. So I think that yes, we have we are a multi-party democracy. The electoral commission mm. is the better. In this case, listen to the NDC, the MPP, and all the parties that actually add on. Listen to all of them and then take the decision that would one suit the entire One of the concerns uh, one of that, concern that, that it came up at the meeting this morning was the fact that, irrespective of the fact that the EC remains an independent arbiter in this, uh, when you look at how people outside of the EC view the commission now with the posturing and the way they're going about things, they do not appear as, uh, so to speak, an independent uh, uh, yes. The advisory body and, actually and, 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 and it, This is what our sources are saying. Oh, I see. They need to work on that because of this issue. There's a lot of mistrust. And you mean people have an issue with the image of the EC as we see because speak. of the posturing regarding uh, 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 the compilation of the register assistance. Now. Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the stance. Uh, oh. Fortunately, just as the, uh, yeah, the, the, the I, think, I think I think we can just do a, yeah. a two seconds single mention. I mean, it, it's, it, it's clearly uh, um, on our website if you want the update on that, which has to do with the fact that Kofi uh, Amoabeng um, and Mike Nyenaku were, uh, you know, it was beyond an invitation. They yeah. were arrested. And then also there's, well, the central oh, says, the bail. There's, a, well, there's a lot more to come. There's a lot more of similar lot arrests lot more, or yes. invitations well, to come. Respite to a hopefully, lot of us. Hopefully who, we are getting to yes, the bottom a lot of this. Of Thank you very much for watching. Kamala Kuche, my colleague in the newsroom and uh, also senior broadcast journalist. And then Alfredo Kanse is uh, uh, head of business desk here at Media General. I am Martin Isidu that you do have a good evening as always. Stay positive. Bye for now. Some of them have started saying, that they some